Welcome back guys. If you're joining me from the first video, you saw that we created this website using CSS Grid and Flexbox, but it is not yet responsive. Uh, one of the pros of using like those grid frameworks like Bootstrap is uh, responsive is some of the responsiveness comes out of the box, um, but it's actually really, really easy to do in CSS Grid. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to grab uh, the media queries for typical sizes from this website. We're just going to do the non-mobile version and let's put that into our responsive.sass file. Okay, let us re-indent this. Okay, so um, what do I want to do? So the first thing I want to do is a certain breakpoint. I just want to make the container smaller. So let's go ahead and do that. What am I talking about? So for this first breakpoint, uh, let's just do container max width. Instead of 1200, let's make it 960. So that should Let's make everything smaller once it hits a certain size. There you go. First thing I want to do. Okay. And I'm going to do my mobile breakpoint at the second breakpoint, which is well, 992, I think. So, right. I'm just going to do it in here. You can do whatever you want. I just feel like doing it in here. So, what is the first thing I want to be responsive? Let's make this stack, these two things, stack upon each other once it hits that breakpoint. So let's do that. So if you remember, we called it, everything's within the header, the top nav. So remember, we, we displayed flexed this. So let's just change the flex direction because by default it's on row. Let's change it to column. And that should, there you go. What else do I want to do? Let's make the logo centered. So dot logo, uh, margin auto. That did not work. Margin auto. So that should center the logo at that breakpoint. There you go. Let's also center the menu. Margin. Let's just give it some margin at the top and then we'll center it using that. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so when it gets to like the smaller size, it's actually too cramped. So let, let's change the width on that. Width 80%. See if that works. Should be more space now. Yes. Okay, that looks good to me. Um, what's next? Also, I want this to stack. So this is using CSS Grid. And we called it dot .hero. And before we had grid template, template columns. We had it in halves like this. But we want it to stack, so we're just going to define one fraction, and that should make it stack. If we resize our browser, there you go. Like, how simple was that? And let's make it centered. Okay. 
Okay. Yep, and that, that was so easy. I also want to just add some padding to the hero image, just to give it some breathing room. Uh, oh, there was originally padding on the left. Let's take that out and let's give it some margin. That should look good. There you go. And now for the featured section, we want the same thing to happen here on our on our grid layout here. So let's see header. It's another one called featured section. Dot featured section. Uh, let's just give it some padding. That's some padding when it gets to a certain size. I think that's already there. Okay. And let let's make the stack. So it was called dot products, right? Products and the grid template columns was in quarters like that but we wanted the stack so we can just give it one and that should stack there you go how simple was that if you wanted to do halves then you just add one more in there and then there'll be halves it's awesome let's just leave it to one and that looks good to me like this is really easy. Okay. And let's just do it again for our blog section. Okay. Uh, feature section ends there. Let's just do our blog section. Dot blog section. And we're going to stack them up again. Blog posts. Grid template columns. Again, we had thirds before, and I'm just going to make it stack. They should stack. There you go. Let's center it. Awesome, awesome. And Let's quickly fix the footer. Okay, so block section is done. Footer content. Let's just change the flex direction to column. Flex direct, oops, flex direction uh, column. That should stack. Okay, and let's just center them. Made with medium margin auto. I should center that. Okay, and let's also center this this menu. Uh, Let's do margins, give it some padding on the top, some margin on the top, and then auto to center it. Let's do that. Okay. And we have to give it a width. So let's go ahead and do that. Width 60%. And I should fix that. So yeah, I had to be more specific here, so I had to specify the footer element there in order to get this to work. So another practical use case for CSS Grid is the ability to specify the order you want things to appear. Um, you would do that by naming your areas and using something called Grid Template Areas to specify what order you want them in. Let me 
show you with what I'm talking about with an example. Um, so this is a classic example. Uh, say, for example, you want these blog posts to appear in a different order once it hits the responsive size. Uh, traditionally, you can't do that without the use of, uh, you need to use JavaScript to do that. Uh, you can do it in Flexbox, but let me show you how CSS Grid does it. So, first thing you need to do is you need to go to your markup and name the items. Oh, let's just put an ID on them. Equals blog one. Let's copy that. And it's blog two and blog three. Okay. The next thing we have to do is specify a name in our CSS file. So let's go to our blog posts right here. And let's target what the IDs we just put in there. And let's give them names. And you would do that by using this property grid area. And let's name it the same as the ID, so blog one. And let us do the same for the other ones. Blog two, blog three, okay. Blog three. So, okay, we have names now. And let's see what difference that makes. Let's put it back to the size. Okay, see, now you see that the layout is all messed up. And they're all, if you see closely, they're all stacked up on each other because we need to specify the order we want them in once we give them a name. So just if you do this property, get template areas and you actually lay it out the way you named it, this will be the order that they appear in. Like the code is dictating how the layout should look like, and that is really cool, in my opinion. So, this should be the way it was before blog one, blog two, blog three. And it's not, why not? Blog one, blog two, blog three. Oh, I forgot the damn semicolon. Okay, this should work. There you go. Now, if you want in a different order, all you have to do is change your name here. Two, three, one. One. And now that should appear in that order. Two, three, one. Awesome. Now, this is also useful in your responsive, where all you have to do in where am I? In the blog section, blog posts, just specify the order you want here. So, grid, template areas. So we originally had it like this, blog one, blog one, blog two, blog three, and thirds. So this is going to be in thirds when it's responsive. We don't want that. We want it to stack. So we just let, we just do something like that. Sorry, not like that. Um, we have to put quotes on each line like that. Blog one, blog two, and blog three. And don't forget that damn semicolon. And then now that's in the stack the way we want it to. And you can specify whatever order you want. Again, if you want two, three, one, just change it based on the name and you can specify the order you want. Two, three, one. There you go. This I think that's an awesome feature, and I'll probably be using that all the time. To give you one more example of that, um, here's another use case where I think it's super useful. Uh, let's go to gridbyexample.com. The examples here have a defining grid areas example. Let's just go into the code pen. And here you can see a typical layout, sidebar, header, content, and we
have specified that layout. See, a dot means that you don't want anything there, and you can see that. So it's in thirds. So let's go ahead and play with this. Let's make let's make it let's use FRs. I like FRs. And that will span the whole width. And let's go ahead and make a media query. Let's just do it at like 500 or something. So what we want to happen is at a certain width, traditionally it's going to stack and the sidebar is going to be on top and then the header underneath and then the content underneath. But let's make it so that the sidebar jumps to the bottom. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we don't need this. So all we have to do is for the wrapper, let's grab all of that. We don't need all of it. I'm just gonna bring that. Okay, so all we have to do is specify that it's just one and then Read this, and then we can just specify whatever order we want here. So if we want the header, header, or for whatever reason, if you want the sidebar in the middle, and then the content, we can go ahead and do that. That's, that's awesome. There you go. Oh, sorry. Wrong breakpoint, 500. Okay, so this is the original layout, and if you get below 500, it's not going to work. There you go, sorry. So here's the original. If we make our browser smaller than 500, then the order is defined right here. Header sidebar content, you can put this wherever you want. If you want the sidebar at the bottom, the content in the middle. And I think that's an awesome feature of CSS Grid. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I really appreciate your time. I hope you learned something new about CSS Grid, Flexbox, or anything else I did in this video. Um, please subscribe if you are interested in this project I'm working on. Um, I'm going to sift through it and start recording videos when I can. So, yeah. Anyways, thanks, guys. Bye.